Hello everyone, I'm Zakargo. Welcome back to Let's Build a Hover Tank. Today, we're going to be going over the thrust and the engine. Now, to start with, I'm going to plop down an electric engine with just enough batteries to give us some power. Doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be electric engine powered. I just want to get an estimate of exactly how much engine power I need before I start building a real engine. So I'm going to go around and I'm going to place down six of these big ass jet engines. One for, uh, well, two for roll, two for front pitch, two for back pitch, and I'm going to set them all to be both pusher, preset, and something else. This way they can control us and keep us aloft up in the air. Uh, and then we're going to fiddle around and just see just how much power we're using. Now, these are not tuned at all yet. These are quite literally just set to do basic pitch and roll. We're going to deactivate this and we're going to watch our engine power. So it looks like we spike up to about 3,000, but for the most part, we only need about 1,100 to stay aloft. Okay. All right. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around and I'm going to add more jet engines. Basically, the more overclocked the jet is, the less efficient it is on power. So if we're using 1,100 right now, I might be able to drop that down to about seven, eight, or nine hundred by uh, simply adding some more jets. Okay, so I'm going back around, resetting all those up to have a proper thrust. And it looks like we are using about 960 engine power now as opposed to just over 1100 before, which means uh, it's pretty good. And if you go around and you take a look at your jets, you can basically see how much they're doing on uh, power output and you can guess how efficient that they're being. So if you take a look at it and it says 3,800 out of 16,000, you know it's close to its normal output, so it's being pretty efficient. What's nice about having more jets than you need is that they, uh, you can then spike up to four times power on multiple jets. So with that little test done, figuring out approximately how many jets that we needed, or figuring out that six jets could hold us quite stable, so long as we were upright vertically, uh, we move on to start building the engine pods. Now what I'm going to do essentially is I lay out a little bit of a frame and then I build on that and I replace blocks as I go. Uh, and then it's not until I have both engine pods completed that I actually save them as uh, prefabs and then put them onto spin blocks. Uh, it's much, much easier to do all the fine tuning and cosmetic work when you can do it in mirror mode than putting it on a spin block and trying to go back and get all that stuff handled. Now, I'm going to end up encasing these jets in heavy armor. Um, I'm using a lot of heavy armor on this craft, and I'm not actually a really big fan. I think I used way too much, but I was just sitting here thinking, you know, I want this to be durable, so what can I do here to make it more durable? And my answer... Uh, when I was building this was, uh, let's just add some more heavy armor, why not? And uh, yeah, I don't think that was the right answer. But I, uh, I'm i going to wait to test it, because I can always go back and um, use the armor editor to just replace it all with like metal and then see how that does. So yeah, uh, I'm trying to stick with my one layer of heavy armor, one layer of a plique armor scheme. This isn't something I've tried before. I've used a plique before. Uh, quite a bit because I really like using it, but I haven't tried using just a, a harder under layer of heavy armor with the applique, so this is a bit of an experiment in this armor scheme for me. And uh, speaking of experiments, this is also a bit of an experiment using this sort of jet setup, using the, sort of a tripod um, sort of, uh, of deal here. So on the back, I think I'm going to have one set of thrusters that twists left and right um, to help with some pitch, not pitch, to help with some roll control, basically. So it should be able to bank pretty hard, and this should be able to keep it stable. Must also uh, got a lot of pitch control on this back end, so hopefully it should be able to do some pretty intense maneuvers. Now, I haven't actually done this before. I can't think of a reason why it shouldn't work, but that doesn't mean I've done it right on the first try. Uh, and sometimes things don't work because you do them wrong. So we're going to have to see how this one turns out. It seems to be going pretty well. Let's take off these bottom thrusters and uh, yeah. 
All right, so now that I know that I have the appropriate amount of thrust, I'm not happy with how the engine pods look just yet, and I'm gonna need to move them anyway so that I can place a spin block down on a, on a mount. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna prefab the right-hand side, move it down, go prefab the left-hand side, move it down, and then we're going to edit these in mirror mode while they're down here. And then once we're happy with how they've turned out, uh, we could put the spin blocks down and get these bad boys mounted. All right, so I went and cut ahead to a more finished design. I think that these look really ugly on their own, but I think they should look a lot better um, when paired with how the rest of the craft is gonna look. We'll see. All right, so here we are. We've just captured the left engine pod as a, uh, as a prefab, and then we're gonna place it onto this spin block that I put down. Now I put the spin block at a little bit of an angle because I essentially want this craft to be pitching forward at all times. So I want the spin I want the spin block to be facing roughly down so that the thing can hover in place. It's going to have to be at enough of an angle so that it doesn't constantly move forward because the back one is not going to be pitched as well. So uh, yeah, this is going to involve some tuning. When it comes to dealing with spin blocks and the like as thrust or controls, it really involves a lot of tuning. You can't be afraid to go back and say, hey, uh, maybe it should be a one degree more or something like that. It, it really can make a huge difference to just have it set up by by the right couple of degrees. So yeah, left engine pod mounted, gonna go capture the right one. Nice thing about having the left engine pod mounted is that I can uh, essentially line it up with the left engine pod and it's a lot easier to place than the first. Out with the old and in with the new baby. Okay, we've tested it and it flies. Alright, so I will go back and show you exactly what these end up being set to. Uh, for the time being, we're going to jump around to some different things that I do. One of the things to note is that I want this thing to stay at like a perpetual forward angle of like 34 or 5 degrees, somewhere in there. So I'm going to go over here and set up an ACB to make sure that it's constantly... Um, you can't you can't change the default angle on a spin block as far as I'm aware So I have to set this ACB to constantly bring it back to that angle so that it will rest here when it's not receiving any other commands Now if you're familiar with automated control blocks, you might be saying okay. Why are you leaving in? all of this recorded at default speed and the answer is when I was new to this game, I was very intimidated by automated control blocks I was very intimidated by PIDs AIs all of the just UI intensive things. So if you've stayed away from ACBs and you stayed away from spin blocks because you just don't know how to do it, I'm hoping it's useful to just see someone fiddling around with the things and getting an idea of what it actually means to tune a spin block. And when I say tuning, I mean sitting here taking a guess at what you think it should be and then finding out how wrong you are and then coming back and fixing it about 27 times in a row. Okay, it's also worth noting that if you want to test something manually, you need to make sure it's set to follow the main drive and not just forward backward command. Um, oh, that was another another thing that I ran into. All right, now we're on to the yaw. Easiest way to do the yaw is to put this down and try to turn. And if you turn the wrong way, it, <laughs> you set the yaw the wrong way. Boom, easy. All right, so I took her out for a test spin to see a little bit of how she handles, and I also want to keep my eye on the engine power. I noticed that under some commands, she does completely hit her, her cap for engine power, so uh, that's not ideal, but uh, it's worth knowing. All right, now we're going to use the same process for the back ones that we used for the front two. We're going to take a prefab of this. We're going to stick it on a truss so that we can uh, delete the whole thing, and then we're going to put a spin block down. And then uh, we're also going to put a little bit of heavy armor casing to protect the spin block. And then, uh, yeah, now this is the part that is an experiment. I have no, I can use this for uh, roll. However, I don't know. I want to, I want to see what happens when I put it on the strafe commands. I don't think I can use it for strafe, but I want to see what happens when I, when I put it there. So, yeah. Uh, anyway, it, it should help a lot with roll control when we're turning hard. So I'll set up, set up the strafe commands, and it looks like all that's doing is making us turn very hard. 
Mm -hmm. Let's undock and give it a test. Yeah, that's just making his turn very hard. Okay, well, we can still use it to help us turn. In fact, we could take turning off of the front. No, I don't like that. I don't like taking turning off the front. I'm honestly, I'm not sure that this back one needs to be on a pod. An engine pod. An engine nacelle, if you want to use the correct term. I think this looks a little bit ridiculous, but I love it. I don't know. Let's see. Let's take it out for a spin. It is correcting our roll. Um, okay, so the thing is, this is an APS firing platform, and uh, I kind of like how stable it is. It might be hard to see, but this, but I can see this thing making minute adjustments all the time um, to help out with the roll. So I think, I think I might actually keep this. One thing I'm definitely not going to keep, however, is this armor scheme here. These things are facing way too far down for that to be a protective layer. I was thinking that the front would be a little bit more exposed, but not. Nah. So I'm going to replace this middle section with uh, three beams of heavy armor. And uh, yeah, I'll be right back. Alright, just over here finishing up the other side. And... Do that, that, and that. And that. And that. Alright. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that looks much better. But I did forget one metal beam over on this side. There we go. Now, I did notice after placing those engine pods that these uh, missile launchers are... They're massive, and they're really far forward. So we're going to move them back a little bit. So yeah, all I really do here is the same thing I did. Uh, prefab them, move them somewhere else, delete the old ones. And I just uh, play around with this a little bit to see where I think they would look right. Alright, so now we get into the tuning of the AI of the thing. Now, for a hover tank, you've got a lot of options when it comes to AI. You can use broadside 1.0, 2.0, circle. Uh, you can use point at and maintain distance. You can even use airplane 2.0, but I don't. Um, you can classify this as a ship or a tank. You can classify it as a hover vehicle. All things considered, this craft can control like a whole bunch of different things. So setting it up to correctly function with an AI is kind of up to you. You can kind of pick whichever one catches your fancy and run with that. For this one, I'm going to stick with uh, point at and maintain distance. Uh, we're using an APS with Hess shells. So all we really need is to keep firing at it whilst within range for our missiles. Uh, we could also use circle, however, our front side is far more armored than our sides, so point at maintain distance is probably going to be the best for this. And we're going to end up having the AI PIDs control the pitch, so make sure that this is on. If you want to control pitch manually using non-AI PIDs, the standard ones, make sure that this is turned off, otherwise your craft will be fighting and it'll just be dumb. All right, so I immediately got shot off of the first test. We're back at the second test, watching how this thing do. Uh, it's controlling its yaw a lot. It's not shooting itself, which is always a plus. The missiles are very, <laughs> very powerful. And I noticed that I took some hits directly to my right engine to sell there and that we are still uh, intact. I'm also noticing that whenever it backs up, it's backing up pretty hard and exposing its jet engines. Also, throughout this fight, I saw a lot of a pleat get knocked off, and the heavy armor and components underneath were fine. And it looks like that... Oh my... Oh my god, that second volley of missiles killed it. Wonderful. Alright. Alright, I'm gonna keep going with some more tests here on my end, just seeing if the AI and weapons work correctly. Uh, other than that, I've been Zicargo. This has been fun. And keep your eye out for the next installment of Let's Build a Hover Tank. I'll see you next time.